Thank you. Let's see. Switching to presentation? Maybe. Anyway, um, thank you for having me. Last year, I was actually here at the previous incarnation. I was uh, trying to think, one of the questions on the panel was, which bots do you actually use? And the list was fairly minimal. Right? The problem, the, the basic thing in the bot is that you see a lot of promise, but you don't see a lot of delivery. And I'm actually very glad to do this presentation after the previous one, because that symbiosis is one of the examples I'll use. But taking a step back, so I'm part of Aleph. Aleph is a venture capital firm that invests in early stage startups. So I get front stage in order to see the kind of new things that are happening. And some of them will be out now, some of them will be out in a year, and some of them are two, three years out. So I'll share a few examples of things that I think are working. But before doing this, this is the state of affairs that we had about two years ago. We are a venture capital firm. We want to kind of build the future, help build the future. And there wasn't a lot of things happening in Israel in the bot space. So we said, how about we give $50,000 of what's basically free money, free money being for the entrepreneurs in the crowd, is convertible note, uncapped, no discount, redeemable. Which means we'll give you money and you can give us back or convert it at whatever the next round is. And we couldn't find what should be the criteria of success for that. Right? There was no good reason, there was no good way to say this is a good bot and this is a bad bot. And when you try to create a competition, you want that to happen. You need that criteria. Right? So the criteria we ended up with is say, you need to help entrepreneurs. Your bot needs to help entrepreneurs and we'll score you according to the NPS, the net promoter score that people will give to your bot. So we actually shied away from the question and saying, well, just provide value and we'll score you however other people say they gave me value and you should also try and use that value. The end winner of this was the simplest bot possible, which was uh, Redash, just a graphic tool, like a charting tool that was embedded into Slack, which ended up being a, like a great use case, but it was such a simple bot that surprised us that that was the bot that got the highest scores. It actually shows how little a year ago, two years ago, of innovation we had. But you've seen this many times, I think, today already, even in the previous presentation, which is the biggest contribution of Gartner to the world, which is supposed to say this is a technology chart, but really it's humans. This is how humans behave. We promise a lot of things, we get excited by that promise, too much expectations happen, and then everyone is sure that nothing will come out of it, we're all in despair, and then maybe some things actually improve. This is humans, right? And this is where we were this past year. Anyone recognizes this? This is CNN, right? The bot by CNN, and an attempt by someone to unsubscribe Right? Apparently, in the rules said that they had, the only way to unsubscribe is to send a one-word message saying unsubscribe. Any other attempt just didn't work, and they try to basically find what the hell the user wants. So that's one example. Tay, anyone from Microsoft here? I apologize in advance. This is the neo-Nazi example of a bot that they ended up creating and pulling out but even the best, some of the best engineers in the world in Yandex, the Russian search engine, failed miserably at that. So very quickly, it turned into Stalin, I guess. So there are enemies of people. And yes, the answer is there are people, and then there are non-people. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, can they be shot? They must be shot. Uh, this is a bot that ended up answering by people training it to do so. This is in China. Um, obviously, I guess people don't, don't speak that, but it says that uh, the state is the enemy and it must not be abided. So that's, all, that's a problematic. And just Microsoft is so good with Thai that you, you need to have some more examples of that. So this is this past year. These are some of the best engineers in the world tackling this bot problem, right? Mind you. But some things do work, right? So, 
A few pieces of advice, there will be a couple of examples I'll use, why the opportunity is big. If you don't just slap a chatbot UI and say, this is my new startup, but it does chat. Right? So these are the examples I want to use. Crestron, uh, Crestron is a developer of Smart Home. Right? Smart Home is most likely one of the biggest red oceans, meaning places where companies go to die. There's so many smart home companies in the world, and a very little number succeeds. And Crestron is kind of a really old company, but what they do is very simple. You press a button, light turns on. You press a button, the shades go up. Very simple stuff, but it works. And that's why they actually still exist. They integrate into Amazon Alexa, which is interesting. It's um, my biggest use case. I actually am a customer of Crestron. My biggest use case, and don't laugh about my parenting skills, uh, 6.45 a.m., there's a program that takes uh, up all the shades in the kids' rooms and turn on all the lights. So by 7 a.m., the kids go downstairs, sunstruck, but they don't blame me. <laughs> right? It's the home. <laughs> so that's a smart home use case. Thank you. Uh, but so, so what's, what's the issue? Why is smart home not working well? And it's mostly because of UI. I, you don't really have a good UI because I'm at home and I want to do something. So today in, in our house, you have, you can say watch TV and we'll actually close the shades and dim the lights and turn on the TV. That is actually pretty good. And it does it with Alexa, with the Alexa integration. It actually doesn't do it with the Alexa, it does it with the Google Home, which I hardwired because I, I don't like Amazon. But, but and, and that's interesting, my wife initially thought it's the stupidest thing in the world, and now she's actually using it as well. Right, so that's a chatbot interface, and the key takeaway there is that public speaking, meaning speaking to Alexa, is actually a good thing. When you, when you see people walking around and talking to their phone, in order for them to transcribe in a public setting. It's chutzpah, it's weird, it doesn't make sense, but public speaking to a bot actually makes sense, and it's one of the most interesting user interface elements that I see in the growth of bots, and I've seen multiple now bot companies that interface through Alexa via public speaking. So that's, that's an interesting one. Um, we actually have also a Telegram bot that I wrote that heats the water or heats the floor, so we have a shared channel between my wife, myself, and the house. So, one other example is, this is Finn, right? It's my secret weapon, it's a way for my assistant not to need to do calendaring and for me to do research, and this is an actual conversation I had with Finn. I needed shorts, and I needed that to happen in the summer, which most men, we still don't understand why don't they sell shorts in the summer because you don't only sell it in the winter, which is weird. But I, I needed that. And so I'm, I'm asking, hey, I'm at Bryant Park in New York. I need to buy a casual but nice-looking man shorts that I can take for a business cruise. What can I do? Do you really think that a computer answered me? And it relates to the previous uh, presentation. So this is a human, but a highly assisted human. that is a chat interface, and it's amazing. Right, they take about $30 an hour for a human, which most of the time is not served by human, but it's just guided by humans. So the interesting thing is, this literally saved me an hour. You see, they, it found it, and the amazing thing is actually, they called ahead. So there was a human that actually called ahead to the store and asked, hey, do you have shorts? That's awesome. That's actually a viable use case. Right? The, in, the takeaway here is that not only humans and computers mix well, but humans are simply a margin problem. <laughs> it's it, bad to say, but humans just cost more than computers on scale. But if you take over a market, if you win over a market, Finn, every customer they have, say their margin right now is 50%, but the more they bring in computers to the fold, it will improve upwards to 100%, but they win over the market they will take over a market and then improve on their margins, which I think is a really interesting thing because general purpose AI is not there yet, but there are major advances that we're seeing like GAN, adversarial networks. They're pretty interesting. And then you replace humans once you own the market. Uh, three years ago, was it? I wrote a post about claiming Uber 
could actually do a self-driving car immediately by having humans do it remotely. They now actually have centers that take over when uh, the autonomous driving car cannot execute on something very, very hard like a left turn. The Waymo and the Uber technology still cannot do a left turn, which is incredible. This is Lemonade, a portfolio company of ours. And I think the takeaway there, they introduced a bot interface, but they didn't introduce a bot interface for the sake of the bot. It fills human and humane, right? So it increases engagement and actually reduces fraud because people feel as if they're speaking with people, right? It, I'm not sure whether you know, most Americans say it's absolutely fine to defraud insurance companies. More than 50% of Americans say it's absolutely fine to do that. And the takeaway there is, it's far easier to feel that it's okay to defraud a website than it is when you speak to a human in front of you, even if that is not really a human. And you convert much better when you think whoever is providing your service is a human. Right, so for Lemonade, the experience is key, and chatbots delight the user. Yeah, they feel better when they have someone that feels as if it's someone on the other side, when done right. This is MailClark. It's a Slack bot that integrates with email. Right? So if you want to bring an email into Slack, this is a great solution. And this is a conversation in the channel with MailClark. Right? So it's in the channel with them, and I, I'm asking for a feature. The support is a human, but it's on the bot channel. And the reason I'm telling you this is if you look, if you fast forward, then the product manager chimed in, still same user, username, but a different person that provides a service. And then the CEO came in and actually delivered on the feature. And it's pretty incredible as, as a customer to just be conversing on a Slack channel with a company, right? And they automatically direct it to whoever is relevant. And so beyond just the CEO needing to do customer support, which I highly advise uh, to anyone, but the, the interesting thing is that it's what's called customer development and lean startups. It's a way for you to quickly develop the product and interface with the customers because the customers are actually speaking to you. And it's a way for you to speed up your customer development. But most, my most important message is that there is a market. Right? That market here is a highly promised market of AR and VR, right? Everyone is hearing about AR and VR. But if you look at 2020, right, the number of handsets or headsets compatible with VR and AR is, say, 25, 30 million. And if you look at chatbots, if you just look at Alexa and the Google equivalent, the Google Home, you actually will have it this year, much more than that. Right? So there are finally devices, and if you count in cell phones, we love this as a VC because the scariest thing for a VC is not to be late to a market, but being too early to the market because companies die, they run out of money. So for us, what we look for is a runtime platform that you can build innovation and applications on top. So this is, this is perfect timing for it. And kind of the best news, I go back to Gartner, right? So the place we're at right now is most likely on the right side of it for the right kind of applications. So, yeah, doing general purpose AI right now and thinking that you'll solve the world hunger problem with chatbots is highly unlikely, right? But you actually have a good set of applications uh, that are available and will be available on chatbots. So, thank you. That's my email, that's my Twitter. Just feel free to continue the conversation. Thank you very much.